This is my husband Ryan. Hi guys. So what are we making today? We're making a learning tower. For baby girl? For baby girl in the kitchen to help mama out when she's cooking. And so, doing a whole bunch of other stuff too. Yeah, exactly. So, so what did, go ahead. What I did was I found some plans online from various websites to get some least and get some measurements. I think it's on Pinterest too. Is it? Okay. Well, there you go. Go to Pinterest <laughs> for your uh, plans needs. Um, got some uh, plans for the wrong height. This is, uh, as you can see, this is an adjustable one. If you know anything about the learning tower, it's, it's got four adjustable heights. Um, I'm kind of working with what I have in the garage here right now. So my dowel that I'm using to support the, the foot platform is a little bigger. So my, my cutouts are a little bigger. What I did was I grabbed some uh, foam board that my wife happened to have laying around. So I created my own little templates for the adjustable part of the stand. And I created a little I guess, oblong circle, just kind of like a little flare in there to take out some weight and also grab, create some little, uh, I guess it would be lifting holes, I'm not sure what they're even for. So I've already uh, cut out one of my pieces with a jigsaw and using three quarter inch birch, which I picked up at Home Depot for about $45 for the 4 by 8 sheet, which sounds like a lot, but considering the learning tower costs $200. Forty-five dollars isn't too bad, and mm -hmm. probably I'm guessing a few hours of my time. So, so, what tools have you used so far? What tools have you used so far? Well, um, a tape measure, obviously, a pencil. Mm -hmm. um, I, I cut, I ripped off my my uh, four by eight sheet of birch with my table saw here. Um, that was fun because it's a big piece of birch and it's heavy and it's a small table saw. I wish I had a bigger table saw, but birthday present. There you go. <laughs> hint, nice, nice. Um, I created two pieces that are exactly the same. So in order to get my two sides identical, I cut one out instead of transferring the template to two pieces. So therefore, and then I'm just going to take this guy, clamp it to the other piece, and then trace out the finished piece onto the new piece so it's exactly the same. So that way we don't have any wobbliness to the shelf. Perfect. It should sit perfectly on the floor. So here I am. I've, like I said, I've just cut out one piece. That's just one side. There's a lot more pieces, as you can see from the plan. There's still feet to be done. There's sides to be done. There's a floor to be done. Okay, we'll get to that in the next step. So you did use. I saw you used your paddle bit paddle bit drill. So to cut out the center parts of the the side piece, I had to cut in. We can't cut in with the jigsaw, so you have to create a pilot hole. And to create a pilot hole, I just used a inch and a quarter paddle bit on my drill. So, okay. Which is about the same size as these pieces right here. So it'll work out pretty well. All right. Well, get cutting and we'll get back to the next step. All right. So what I've done is I've sandwiched my two boards together and I clamped them together so that when I run my trace around my pattern, my boards don't move and throw it all off. So I've uh, run my trace, I've popped my clamp on, and I'm left with a pattern. So now I'll cut it out.
so here I am I'm done cutting out all the main pieces there's 12 of them um, this doesn't include the little support that they stand on because I'm not sure what size that's going to be yet so I don't want to cut that yet until I have it all put together do a little dry run make sure it's everything fits so that's all of them so what I'm going to do now is probably router out all the edges of these things so they're nice and smooth and then put it together okay now that I've finished cutting out all the pieces and laid them all out I will take them all to my table router and round off the edges I'm using a uh, quarter inch round bit for the router I think that takes off enough um, just to make the edges nice and smooth so I did it what I've done is I've taken all the pieces all the edges that are exposed and rounded them off all the edges that are used to connect to other pieces like this piece right here which goes between the two sides uh, I didn't router those all I'm going to do with those is just kind of just run a little bit of sandpaper over them, just kind of take off the burrs. But I want a nice t tight fit between the pieces, so I didn't router those off. But everything else, so all the pieces I routed off, and now it's nice and smooth. And so I, for moms that don't have a router, or families that don't have a router, do you think just taking the sandpaper sand to it sure. would be okay? Uh, if you don't have a router, or if you have like a little orbital sander like this, um, you can use one of these, a little, a little quarter, uh, quarter sheet sander like this. You can use one of those to kind of go over the edges, but it's going to be hard to get inside all these little, little pieces right here. But if you uh, have the time and uh, have the sandpaper, there's no reason why you can't just take a piece of sandpaper and just get in there with your fingers and just mm -hmm. round off all the little pieces right here and take off all the burrs. The important thing is, is that you, when you touch the edges here, you don't want to get splinters and burrs, especially with the kids. So um, whatever it takes, whether it be sandpaper or a router, to take these little hard edges off. Go ahead. Do it. And I was thinking about this earlier too. If people don't have a table saw, if they know the size, they could probably have Home Depot cut down the size they needed as far as the two panels, sure. right? Sure. You betcha. Um, there's a lot of pieces here. Um, I use my jigsaw to cut a lot of round pieces, like to put some like kind of style into them. There's no reason why that can't be just a straight cut. Yeah. Um, I just did it just to. But a jigsaw you can get for relatively inexpensive, so... Yeah, a, a cheap jigsaw you can pick up for probably 50 bucks at any yeah. improvement store. So. Um, and obviously they go up. More so most people have a jigsaw and a drill, I'd say, but maybe not a table saw. So I think it's Yeah, it doesn't have to be a table saw. You can use a... If you have a little circular saw, um, it's not going to be as straight and easy, but you could probably do it if you're good with it. Um, but like, like uh, you said, um, there's no reason why you can't take the measurements into to Home Depot and have the guys in there cut them for you, make them do something for once. <laughs> <laughs> so even after using your router, you might find you still have a little bit of sharp edges on some of this stuff. So the other alternative to using a router was just a piece of sandpaper. You can also take that sandpaper when you're done, if you have a router, you just go over the edges and just take off any little burrs that remain, just make sure it's nice and smooth because now's the time to do it. You wanna, don't want to find those burrs and start spots later after uh, the little munchkins are climbing all over it. And, Owie owie, got a splinter. So what I'm doing right now is just attaching the legs to the uh, base of the wall. So I've already pre-drilled most of my connections and now I'm, as you can see, almost done with the second one here. I marked the ends after I pre-drilled them so I could use the same um, foot pieces again. That way my holes would line up perfectly. So what I'm doing now is, after I get done, it'll look just like that. Through the side wall, the, the leg, and the side brace. All one piece. I'm using 3 inch deck screws that I had laying around the house. And there we go. One side is done. Obviously you can tell it's not stained or painted yet. What I'm doing is I'm putting everything together to make sure everything fits and then I'll end up taking it all apart, staining it, and then putting it back together after the stain dries. There's one side. Okay, so I finished assembling the entire piece and I have my chief test pilot right now trying it out. Apparently it's okay, stable enough. She hasn't fallen out of it yet. It's like her play tower right now. So as you can see, I attached the base legs to the sides, and I attached the four front and rear pieces. I actually flipped them over from the planks. So I thought they looked better this way with the, um, the arches angles facing each other. Other side's the same. And I went ahead and built the step platform on the bottom, which is a little bit smaller than the actual opening. It's about a one inch gap on the side to allow for the movement of the pegs or the dowels so they can change the height of it and, and that's about it so so I'm just gonna do a little bit more sanding 
smooth off some edges, and then we'll probably I'll disassemble it all, stain it, and then reassemble it. Release. Say hi. Hi.